All right, today I'm going to show you how to uh, make a, a test box for one of these um, whirlpool style motors. Now, this motor, this same motor is going to be on different brands, like a Mana, Roper, Whirlpool, um, anything that Whirlpool makes, this motor should be on. And I'm going to show you what you need to get off of an old machine to run this motor right here. So anyway, I've got this So what you need to salvage from this machine, or an older machine, is the uh, wires that go to the motor and to the capacitor. And I'll show you how to wire it. So I've already done that with this. And I took this. These are the wires that you can, if you have an old machine, here's the motor plug, here's the capacitor, and here are all the wires that you're going to need to wire this thing up and what else you're going to need is a a three-way switch on on off in the center so you're and we'll get uh, I'll show you a schematic that you can can get for this particular switch you're going to need a, a project box this one happens to be I tell you what, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna put a materials list in the in the uh, oh, comments below. Uh, one that you can download, and also you're gonna need a salvaged power cord, uh, with three wires in it, a ground, a hot, and a neutral. That's what we have here, and we'll just cut this off and we'll wire it up. So let's go inside and because it's super cold today we're supposed to get like three to four inches of snow tomorrow uh, that's really unusual in Louisiana it's better than what they were predicting they were predicting six to eight inches and now the they've gone way down on their their prediction now so let's uh, make our way to the office and I'll show you what we need to do okay what we're going to wind up with is this particular box right here power cord and coming in one side and it's coming out the other and you're going to have uh, this switch Now this switch is going to turn it's going to be forward and reverse and you also need to download this sheet uh, there'll be a link in the description this goes to my candle website and you can download this and you can download um, I'll put a, a materials list to do this also so and I've already made this box and I've, I, if you haven't seen my previous test box for the old style machines uh, the old style direct drive whirlpools uh, I'll put a link to it right above up here and you can check that out if you need to run those boxes now these boxes are also good if you want to use those motors as like uh, to run bench tools or or something else you can salvage those motors and this is how you would you would run that the motor in forward and reverse so I've already made this box up and let me turn it around so we can get a better look at the wiring in it now I've got this piece of insulation to keep the capacitor from running around so if you'll see this uh, this three-way switch I've got it wired the way it needs needs to go and the way this wires if you look at this here's your, your power cord coming in and on this power cord you have a black a white and a green so to wire this, when you the black wire is going to go to the center, to the center um, post on your toggle switch, 
So your black wire goes to the center post on the, on the toggle switch. The red wire, which goes back to the capacitor on this side, goes to that capacitor on that side. The other red wire that comes off the capacitor will go out to the to the motor plug to that red red wire. The orange wire coming off of the switch goes back to the capacitor and it's paired with a yellow wire. If you'll see the orange and orange and yellow go into this plug and it goes back out to the uh, power connector to the motor. The ground wire goes to the ground wire coming back from the, the motor plug. And the blue, I mean the, the black and the white wire, the black with the white stripe, that wire goes to the neutral wire on your power cord. And it's a very simple to wire this thing up. It's a lot simpler than wiring the uh, the direct drive motor of, of the Whirlpool, the old style Whirlpools. Now, I put all this stuff in this in this box and it's just kind of loose. So I have this insulation I put in here. Now this insulation is conductive. I, I guess I should have pulled the foil off of it. But if you have like a piece of foam or something like this, this was just like a piece of leftover R22 insulation that goes on my ceilings there. And, uh, Anyway, it it keeps everything from moving around, and these are all insulated, so they're not going to have any contact. I guess I could put a piece of tape over the top of that, but I don't, I don't think it really contacts it. But anyway, that's what's inside this box, and I'll demonstrate it for you here in a minute. And it's really easy to, to put these together. I think you uh, you just drill a hole here, a hole here. You're going to need some grommets and uh, if you really want to tidy it up and tidy your wires up on the inside, I guess you could put it in, in some heat shrink and then when you get everything pretty up, shrink it down but you're going to have to get the uh, that part of the wiring harness off of your machine and you strip away all those tape and the, and the plastic uh, conduit that protects the wires and you'll have exactly what you need and this right here will show you how to do it. Let's go get a motor and test this thing. So let's take one of our Whirlpool motors. Here's one. And we'll just put it on the workbench here. And we'll plug this part in. And we'll plug this part in. Now, I can test both the forward and reverse. That goes right on. And that reverse. Now, if you wanted to use this motor for a, a bench tool, you have numerous ways that you could mount it. Like this. And these are very powerful motors. And I guess the specs are on here somewhere. But yeah. How many RPMs and all it'll, it'll turn and what horsepower it is. 
and I don't have my glasses on so I can't read it to you but you can salvage these motors and build you one of these boxes and uh, you can imagine what you can do with this you can mount this little box on the side of your workbench you know to run your uh, any tool that you that you happen to want but anyway that is how you build one of these things if I can get this one back off come on I tell you what it is cold in this shop today it's got this little slide here that's what's going on yeah that little slide that keeps it from pushing down Build you one of these. This is for the uh, Whirlpool. I'm also going to make one for GE Motors. They have a different plug. And some of these other motors have different plugs too. So you can make a... But it, it's the same principle. You just need your, uh, your capacitor and, and your wires. Um, they all may have a different style. They don't all have different style plugs, but the GE has a, a different style plug. And I'm, and but it's the same principle on a GE. You could you would do it the, the same exact kind of way, except that the capacitor on the GE is going to be found up on the top, right in, in, in the top part of the cabinet. So you'll have to trace those wires, and you you have to pull it out. But this is basically all you need to pull off of there to get this thing going. And on this plug, the wiring is a little different. The, the colors on this one are just a little bit different. See, this one is all white, where the other one is, is black with a white stripe. But you can, you can figure it out from the, from the uh, schematics. So you may have a different color wiring scheme, but from the schematics, you can figure out how to put this thing together. Anyway. That's how you're going to build one of those. They're really nice to have. Anyway, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up and chip you out.